Bujou in the Nawe Maginag, Bakabu sequin de Jenikaz, Makwan in Dudem, Kazagisqua Jame Kag in Dunjiba, Anigami Singh in Da. Hello, my family. My Indian name is Wades in the Water. I am Bear Clan. I'm from the Leech Lake Band of Ojibwe, and I live in Anigam. I'm the daughter of Mel Hunt and Kathy Manel, and the granddaughter of Jim and Phyllis Hunt, and Maggie, and John King. This is me and my two daughters and my granddaughter. We are a business that's called I Am Anishinaabe. I'm an independent Native American business owner, Native apparel designer and beadwork artist. Lavender Hunt is our oldest daughter and she's our co-collaborator. Co Sage is shining a new light for herself and has ventured off into developing her own native apparel and beadwork business called Four Tracks. Um, the granddaughter Snowy is our brand signature and international model. This is a, a photograph of us on the cover of the Native Max magazine, which is the leading fashion magazine in Indian country. We can all agree that clothing is essential. Clothing is necessary. <laughs> Some people may say that they're not interested in fashion, yet everybody has their definitive likes and dislikes about what they will and will not wear. Fashion is a multifaceted portrait of identity. Clothing exhibits a complex thread that weaves together economics, ethnicity, gender identification, politics, religion, and attitudes. Fashion is more than just clothing. It is jewelry, tattoos, makeup, and fragrance. We use fashion to send a message to people, information about what we want people to know about ourselves. It's information at a glance. It is a connection to our history, values, and our vision for the future. And in this particular photograph, I'd like to call your attention to the young man wearing the business suit. His name is Matt Dunkley. He's also known as Junia Ogichida, and some people may be familiar with him. He, had, he was a life-size uh, persona. He committed suicide earlier this year, and he was 34 years old. You wouldn't know by looking at him or by reading his daily social media posts because he's talk about empowerment and being happy and finding your place in life. He was very positive and um, he struggled with PTSD. He was a soldier in the um, Iraq war. And I'd like to remember him for his compassion and his love that he had for people. These are all of my friends and I'm very lucky to know these people. They live amazing lives, and they're super cool. I make a statement about things people care about through my clothing, about the environment, water is life, honor the earth, and deforestation. Humanity, such as missing and murdered women, and two-spiritism. It's important to recycle, reuse, and repurpose. Pollution affects our four-legged, our winged and our finned and our plant relatives. And not associated with the, with the symbolism is the importance of wearing good quality fabric so your clothing lasts a long time. A comedian friend of mine and relative named Tito Yabara summed everything up in one simple statement, natives against everything. <laughs> Uh, so I ask myself the question, what can I do to contribute to humankind and give back to the community? What I can do is make clothing that empowers people, clothing that makes people happy. This is Jennifer. She received her doctorate degree, and when she was preparing for that, she wanted a, a personal statement about herself through her graduation sash. She had survived major personal setbacks, death, grief, and depression. And you'd think that someone who is as sophisticated and well-educated as she would live a perfect life, right? 
Well, she asked me to make the sash for her, and it included animals, spirits of her loved ones who would repeatedly visit her throughout her life. She wanted a birch tree, blueberries, a white owl, a hummingbird, and then, of course, Ojibwe floral. And she feared that she was asking too much, that that was too much to put on such a small space. But I thought it was important to include water, <laughs> the daytime sky, and the evening sky. Because in the Ojibwe culture, water is healing, and the sky symbolizes eternal happiness. And that was my way to stitch an added prayer into her sash for her. This is a skirt that Lavender made. We have never received the amount of comments on anything we've made more than this item. Most controversial of anything we've ever done. Why? The slit. We love to receive feedback, whether it's good or bad, because we really get to know what people are thinking about our work. This particular skirt was made as part of our Urban Vibe collection. When we were preparing for the Native Max magazine, we had done a lot of traditional um, design skirts, and we thought, let's do something contemporary. And I believe that we were successful in achieving our goal. Lavender created this skirt that displays the pride in our culture and that can be worn in a nightclub while showing our leg, if we so choose. When we journey beyond tolerance and begin to appreciate individuality, only then can we embrace compassion in others and personal acceptance of ourselves. I designed this skirt with a vision to accept recognize, acknowledge, and include two-spirit, gender nonconformity dress to make something beautiful for everyone in our community. It's dark and gothic, early Victorian, tattoo culture, raw and edgy with woodland symbolism of the Great Lakes natural environment. As Anishinaabe, we have always had traditional roles in our culture. Everyone worked to the extent that they could. What was important was contributing to the family to the best of your abilities. If you were strong, you would do heavy work. If you were dexterity in your fingers, you could do beadwork, both men and women. Roles prior to colonialism were not strictly male or female. Our original language is not based on male and female genders. It is based on animate and inanimate objects, whether something is alive containing a spirit or whether it does not. There were no taboos of crossing masculine or feminine boundaries. Jonathan Labelois, a Mi'kmaq from Quebec, created this painting called Still Dancing. It has become a symbol for the missing and murdered indigenous women's movement. If you look closely on her shawl, you can see actual photographs of missing and murdered women, not only indigenous women, but all women. The philosophy is the same in all native nations. Dancers dance for those who cannot, the elderly, the sick, and those who have passed on. It's like all these women are still dancing through her. Jonathan donated the original piece to the Native Women's Shelter of Montreal. I made this skirt to bring about awareness of the murdered and missing women movement in collaboration with Jonathan Labelois. This is Sally. Sally is not Native and fell in love with the skirt. She loved the meaning behind it, but questioned the appropriateness of a non-Native wearing a Native skirt. And I appreciate her thoughtfulness and consideration about cultural appropriation. Although this is not a situation of cultural appropriation since I am a Native designer working with the permission of a Native artist, nothing was stolen. We welcome the aid of anyone to help bring awareness to the issues of violence against women, sex trafficking, psychological abuse, and murder. We share in the same values of strength and unity. I leave you with the words of our elders, Gida, Mino, Duda, Dimin. 
And I'd like everybody to repeat that. <laughs> After me, Geda, Meno, Duda, Dimin. Everyone is battling personal strengths. Take care of each other and treat each other kindly. Miigwech bisendawi Thank you for listening to me.